Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today we're talking about the 10 things you must do if you're going to switch to Final Cut Pro 10. Check it out. Save it for conversation. All right, so we're back to talking about Final Cut Pro 10. Thanks everyone for joining me. I know a lot of you out there are using Premiere, DaVinci, maybe even Avid, and you're curious about Final Cut Pro 10. Maybe you've been hearing some good things now that these M1 chips are out on the new Mac Mini and the new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Maybe some of you are in a lot of pain. Premiere Pro is crashing on you. DaVinci is maybe a little bit more complex than you want to deal with, even though it is free, which is great. There are a number of reasons I'm sure all of you are looking to switch to Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing that I want you to do if you've switched or are switching to Final Cut Pro 10 is once you have the application installed on your computer, I want you to do a couple of things in your settings before you even begin to edit a video. So we're going to go up to Final Cut Pro 10 and then Preferences. I want you to click on Playback. And here I want you to know where you can toggle on and off background rendering. Background rendering is something that is responsible for frustrating a lot of new users to Final Cut Pro 10 because when you're editing in Final Cut Pro 10, your graphics, your transitions, your titles, and even your footage are going to be rendering in the background and generating files that take up space on your hard drive, whether you're working on an internal or an external. And because Final Cut is creating those files, it's taking up space, and some of you are getting the not enough disk space error. I go over that in another video called Top 10 Mistakes in Final Cut Pro 10. You can check it out above, but you wanna be able to turn this background rendering on and off so that you can control how much space your Final Cut Pro 10 libraries are taking up. So you can control the file size of your Final Cut Pro 10 library by checking this on and off. So the other thing that you want to know about in the playback menu is create optimized media for multicam clips. If you create a multicam clip with this box checked, Final Cut is going to automatically create optimized media for that multicam. That footage, although it plays back much more smoothly on your computer, takes up a ton of space on your hard drive. So from the beginning, you're probably going to want to have this unchecked so you're not seeing space issues with your hard drive. And as you get more acclimated to the software and understand what this means, you'll be able to toggle that on and off as you see fit. So for those of you first starting out with Final Cut, I would recommend unchecking this box in your preferences as you get Final Cut ready to start your first project. So next we're gonna look at the import tab and there's two different ways that new editors in Final Cut Pro 10 import footage. First type is someone who inserts an SD card or whatever from their camera and they use the menu that pops up automatically in Final Cut to allow you to import your footage. So you're taking that footage from your SD card, CF card, whatever it is, and you're going directly into Final Cut. Because Final Cut is wanting to simplify the organization process with your original camera files, it's going to automatically copy all of that footage into the Final Cut library and take up space on your hard drive. So if you're someone that just wants to plug in an SD card or whatever your card from your camera is and have it captured to Final Cut or imported to Final Cut and then stored in Final Cut so you don't have to worry about choosing where to store those files, you're gonna to wanna to leave copy to library storage location. If you're someone like me, again, who captures your footage from your SD card, for example, and into a folder system, you're gonna to wanna to to check this preference, leave files in place. Then the last thing that you're gonna do in the preferences is you're gonna uncheck create proxy media. By default, when you first open Final Cut, you'll probably see this create proxy media checked here. And the reason it does that is because a lot of footage, especially H.264, is very intensive for your computer. And Final Cut wants you to create low res proxy files so that your editing experience doesn't have any lag, drop frames, stuttery playback, etc. For most of us who want control again over our file size and we want to work with the original camera files, especially if our computer is more than capable of playing back H.264 footage, you're going to want to uncheck create proxy media. So these menu settings are the first crucial step if you're someone who has switched or recently started using Final Cut Pro 10. So the second thing that you should do once you first start using Final Cut Pro 10 is locate all of the keyboard shortcuts in the help menu. So if you go up to help and then choose keyboard shortcuts, 
you're going to see this menu box open up and you can go to the second line and click on keyboard shortcuts and final cut and you're going to have a list here of all the different keyboard shortcuts that work with final cut pro 10. if you're someone who has not really used keyboard shortcuts in your editing in the past this is something i highly recommend learning how to do it's going to help you orient you to what all the keyboard shortcuts are for the most basic editing functions and some of the more advanced editing functions it's also going to show you keyboard shortcuts for editing functions that aren't in like a preference menu a drop down menu they're not a right click option when you right click on something there isn't an option for it in the user interface it's something you can only do with a keyboard shortcut so you'll want to keep this handy maybe uh, in the background something that you can switch to you can save it as a PDF and print it out and have it handy at your workstation but you're gonna to want to start referencing these keyboard shortcuts so you can start building up that knowledge base and start editing faster and more efficiently as well as use tools that are gonna help you navigate some of the unique features of Final Cut Pro 10 like the event browser and all of the organization and metadata you can do, as well as the magnetic timeline. So make sure that you have these keyboard shortcuts available and that you're actively working to learn them. All right, so the third thing that I want you to do if you've recently switched to Final Cut Pro 10 or if you're using Final Cut Pro 10 for the first time, and also if you're someone who has been using it for a few months, a few weeks, maybe even a year, and you really don't feel like you have really learned how it works and you're struggling still after months, weeks, weeks, a year of working with it, I just want everyone to quit Final Cut Pro 10. Just turn it off, close the application. I want you to calm down, take a deep breath, and just relax. Some of you out there are so anxious to get started with it, you're just going to dive into the software. You're not going to look into tutorials, Final Cut user groups. You're not going to look at any of the resources that I'm going to outline in this video. You're just going to start learning it on your own. And what this is going to do is it's going to start creating bad habits. It's going to set you up for more frustration and pain, and it's going to put you at risk for throwing the software out whole cloth because you haven't taken the time and deployed patience to look at some videos and other resources that get your head around how it works. So that's my third piece of advice. Just quit the application, calm down, take a deep breath, and start going through some of the resources that I'm going to outline. Take a moment to watch some tutorials, understand how the program fundamentally works, and establish that foundational conceptual knowledge so that you can start using the application the way it's intended, not the workarounds and the different things that you've tried to come up with to make it through an edit. So the fourth thing that I want you to do is to watch the original sneak peek keynote event from Las Vegas's NAB 2011 presentation that Apple made. So uh, if we pull up YouTube here, we can search for, let's see, we're going to search for Jimmy Giliberti. Jimmy Giliberti. So you're going to see Jimmy G Giliberti here, and he has uh, put the Final Cut videos into uh, a couple of different parts, four parts total. Almost all of the videos of this keynote are people in the audience in 2011 filming it with their phone or cameras or whatever they were using, so the quality is not the greatest. But I think it's really important to watch the first presentation of this software so you can not only hear the audience's reaction, but you can see the original user interface and hear some in-depth explanations from Apple directly of why the software works the way it does and how it works. So you can start with part one and give that a watch. Again, the quality is terrible, but you can get through it. And, and, and really, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough watch all four parts, kick back, get a cold beverage, a snack, and just go through and watch it so you can see the presentation where Apple is talking about, again, what they intend with the software. So the fifth thing that I want you to do is I want you to subscribe to Ripple Training on YouTube. Ripple Training, if you search for it, will come up and you'll see uh, their channel. They have uh, 800 or so videos where they do tutorials for Final Cut, Motion, DaVinci Resolve, and Logic Pro 10. You're gonna focus on the Final Cut Pro 10 videos, and you can see here that there are quite a few of them. So if you look at Ripple Training's playlist, you can see there's uh, a number of different playlists you can check out for Final Cut Pro 10. There's a playlist here for getting started with Final Cut Pro 10.4, 
and exploring the user interface. Those are, those are some great videos. I mean, there's some basics here, importing media, assembling a movie, trimming clips, adding titles, adding effects, color correction, 360 movies, sharing your stuff. These are really good tutorials from the folks at Ripple Training to help give you a basic understanding of how Final Cut Pro 10 works. So definitely subscribe to Ripple Training. And they also have paid classes and courses that you can take, I believe at rippletraining.com. If it's something where you really want to look at an in-depth course on Final Final Cut Pro 10 and you want to pay a little bit of money to get like all of that information condensed down into one place instead of sort of picking things off on YouTube to try to teach yourself, this is a great place to go to learn all about Final Cut Pro 10. And I think that this is uh, the most sort of concentrated resource of how-to videos for using Final Cut. So definitely check out Ripple Training if you're new, if you just switched to Final Cut Pro 10, or if you've been using it for a while and you're getting really frustrated. So the sixth thing that I want you to do if you're new to Final Cut is I want you to subscribe to Larry Jordan's YouTube channel. If you go up to uh, the search bar and type in Larry Jordan, we can find his YouTube channel. And Larry Jordan has a lot of great tutorials on how to use Final Cut Pro 10. If you look at his playlists, he has a number of different uh, software tutorials, Apple Motion, Premiere Pro, all of that. He really has some in-depth training here for Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro 10 editing, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 getting started. This playlist, I think, is probably one of your best bets, and it's going to be good for learning the sort of foundational fundamental knowledge of Final Cut Pro 10. You can certainly look at his other playlists on Final Cut, especially the more recent ones because they're for newer versions of Final Cut where the user interface is going to be more familiar to you. Some of these older videos, not a lot has changed about where things are in the user interface with Final Cut, but they've definitely added a lot of new features. This is going to be really good for getting a fundamental understanding, especially of the event browser and the magnetic timeline. Uh, some videos that you really want to watch is this one and this is these are relatively short but like creating a simple edit in FCPX seven minutes and 15 seconds organizing clips in the timeline transitions importing and managing media in Final Cut let's take a look at his Final Cut Pro 10 editing yeah these are all great much longer tutorials faster editing faster editing duplicate projects using the precision editor creating auditions Larry has a lot of great resources, and just like Ripple Training, Larry op also offers paid courses on his website, which I believe is LarryJordan.com. So definitely check out Larry Jordan's site uh, if you want to do some of his paid coursework. Otherwise, just check out his YouTube channel and subscribe and start going through all of the Final Cut videos. So the seventh thing I want you to do is I want you to subscribe to FCPX Tour on YouTube. This channel has a good amount of videos where filmmakers in the industry, especially a lot of European filmmakers, do in-depth sessions uh, with working with Final Cut, especially in situations where it's a documentary, it's a TV show, stuff on, uh, on the higher level where there's a lot of footage, a lot of organization, and a lot of professional high-end workflows being used. I don't think they have updated their videos in quite a while, so it, I, don't, I don't think it's an active channel anymore. It's been about a year since they put a video up, but there is one filmmaker in particular here named Ben Mercer, who has done several videos through the channel, and those videos I'll link down in the description, those specific videos, but they are really great at showing a very in-depth look at what his process is for editing these videos. And then I'll link to another video where one of the presenters talks about the differences between Final Cut Pro 10 and Premiere Pro. And although some Premiere Pro users have kind of called him out in the video for not really understanding some of the keyboard shortcuts and a few of the tricks that Premiere has that makes what he's doing not as difficult. It's still a great way to get a comparison of what Final Cut is doing with the magnetic timeline and what the limitations are of track-based editing. So I'll link to that video as well. But definitely watch all the Ben Mercer videos and this video I just spoke about, again, linked in the description. This is gonna be a great way for you to get a more immersive look at Final Cut Pro 10, especially if you're an editor who has worked on higher-end projects or more complicated projects with a ton of footage again a documentary a documentary TV show or maybe even an independent feature film so definitely check out FCPX tour if you're new to Final Cut all right the eighth thing that I want you to do and this is a hugely gratuitous plug I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so if you're here 
You obviously are watching my video or videos already, but if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, go ahead and click the subscribe button because I have a lot of Final Cut content on this channel and there's going to be a lot more Final Cut content to come. Admittedly, most of my videos are for people who are already using Final Cut and they either want to learn more keyboard shortcuts or they want to sort of solve some of their frustrations. I do intend to do more tutorials about how I go about importing footage, organizing my media, things like that. So stay tuned. But some of these videos like nine magical tips for FCPX, and especially this one, if you're new to Final Cut Pro 10, top 10 mistakes in FCPX. I go in depth on a number of different areas where newer users are really struggling with the software. So you definitely wanna check that out. And I also have a video up about the magnetic timeline, which I think has been really helpful to a lot of viewers. And that video is here. It's learn to love the magnetic timeline, seven tips to help you master the magnetic timeline. Again, that video is more for people who are already understanding and using the magnetic timeline, but we're having some frustrations. And I'm gonna help you unlock some tricks features, tips that you can use to get even better with it. So definitely subscribe to my channel. We're really growing a community here and pushing Final Cut Pro 10 into production and post-production workflows that I, I commonly use. All right, so the next thing that I want you to do, the ninth thing is I want you to bookmark the fcp.co website. So we're gonna pull that up here. And uh, this is a website for Final Cut Pro 10 users. And I've been on this website for years. Uh, Peter Wiggins, who's a huge Final Cut Pro 10 advocate and personality in the video editing and Final Cut Pro 10 world, he runs this uh, website, and there's a lot of great resources here, plugins, free stuff, uh, tutorials, all kinds of uh, things that are coming out with Final Cut Pro 10. So you definitely want to add this as a bookmark in your browser and come back here regularly to participate in the forums, learn about new Final Cut features, software updates, find user stories, different tutorials, and just connect with the community here at fcp.co. All right, so the last thing that I want everyone to do, the 10th thing that you should be doing if you are new to Final Cut, if you've just switched, or if you've been using it for a while and you're frustrated, is I want you to join a few Final Cut Pro 10 user groups. So the first one is Final Cut Pro user group. These Facebook groups are a great way to not only read about the other things that people are experienced with Final Cut, good and bad, but for you to post any questions that you have or if you need to get specific help for something. It's always good to either post a screen grab or a, a short recording of what your issue is so the community can help you out. Admittedly, sometimes uh, when people you know post an issue that they're having, some of the users in here can be a little bit condescending or snarky, but for the most part, uh, there are users like me who are constantly looking at these posts and any chance that we have to help someone break through uh, with Final Cut Pro 10 or figure out an issue that they're having, resolve bugs, crashes, whatever it is, this is a great place to go. The other user group is Final Cut Pro 10 users and uh, very similar to the other one, again, just a place where a bunch of Final Cut Pro 10 users get together help troubleshoot, share articles, do whatever we can to move uh, ourselves forward in our editing. So those are the first 10 things you have to do if you've switched to Final Cut Pro 10. So again, hit me up in the comments. Let me know why you've switched to Final Cut or why you've chosen Final Cut as your NLE. Feel free to post to the community any resources that were really valuable for you as a Final Cut Pro 10 user. Maybe it's a different YouTube channel or a website or a set of tutorials, whatever it is, let's share in the community in the comments everything that people can be using to learn how to use Final Cut Pro 10 more, more quickly and more efficiently. But that's gonna do it for this video, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Again, the most important thing you can do to support the channel is to click that like button below. If you've been watching my videos or you're excited about what we're gonna be doing in 2021 and you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time we upload a video. Thank you so much to all of you. I wouldn't be able to make these videos if it wasn't for your support encouragement and your continued watching of these videos so thank you very much until the next one i will see you all soon